Hello everyone, my name is Gabor Mesaros and this is Genomics Bootcamp where we speak about genomics from the beginner's perspective. This is kind of a special video where we follow up on the FST computations. There was a, a note in the uh, quality control part that was saying that uh, you should be careful with the minor early frequencies and the Hardy-Weinberg uh, kind of limitations. In this video we will show what happens if uh, by chance you're not careful and how the results could be altered uh, significantly. So basically you will see that by, well, not being careful in these aspects, you are basically losing the very results you are looking for. This video also serves as a kind of a warning for all the genomic analyses that uh, one should be careful with the data modifications and quality controls and uh, just uh, be aware what is being done and uh, what is necessary to do and what is, well, not even not necessary but uh, outright harmful. Because uh, as the saying goes, the fact that you can do it, it, it doesn't mean that you should do it. In this case, uh, the quality control of the genomic data. So let's go and see what happens in these two occasions. Okay, so here we are back uh, with the FST computations and this time with the wrong approach number one, that is uh, considering the minor array frequency in the quality control. So you see that we ended up with this uh, plot uh, for the last time. So we are quite happy that we see some kind of a signals. Now, we tried to rerun the whole thing, but this time we consider a fairly normal threshold of 5% uh, for the minor early frequency, meaning that we will remove fixed SNPs from both populations and also those which are, have a really small frequency in both populations separately. Now, this could be a major problem because uh, the FST is nothing else than comparison of allele frequencies. And actually the values, the high values that you expect in cases that one breed is fixed for one allele and the other breed is fixed for another allele. These alleles could be, or these genotypes or, or loci could be fixed or close to fixation within breeds. So this kind of uh, quality control, we remove them in both cases but then we are actually missing these results, the main results from our, from our output. Okay, so let's try to run these and uh, basically removing also the minor early frequencies. And uh, well, let's see. So here you see about 1,800 removed due to minor early frequency thresholds. And this other one is well, even more, 3,600 removed to minor early frequency thresholds. Normally, these are kind of okay numbers, so we will not be concerned in uh, other cases, but uh, well, just see what happens. Okay, so with a, a bit of a cut, we got to this uh, point. Uh, basically, I rerun everything. We did the FST calculation as before. Again, same du duplicates removed with FST between the families. And now comes the big reveal with the, well, basically about the outcome for the considering the missingness. Okay, so this is a new plot already. And uh, well, you see what happened here. So actually most of the interesting stuff disappeared. We have a lot of things disappearing from the middle of the plot. And in particular, we had a very nice signal here, but this is also deleted. That's because this signal is most likely an outcome of alleles that are fixed or almost fixed in a different way in the two populations. So I just put it back. So this was the original and you just watch this, how this disappears. Bam! And it's not there. Also here I would like to underline that uh, if you don't see any clear signal between two populations or any two populations, it doesn't mean that there is necessarily a problem in quality control, but certainly it would be one of the things to check before you uh, draw further conclusions. 
So, and the other approach, the other wrong approach I want to discuss here or show here is the quick and dirty analysis when you do the quality control together for the two breeds with a joint check for the Heinrich Weiberg equilibrium. So you see here, this is the whole script for the FST analysis and in particular, it misses the well, division into two breeds uh, or two data sets and the separate quality control. So here I also use the keep farm statements with the two breeds together and uh, doing the quality control for both breeds together. Well, here there is no minor allele frequency check as it should be, but there is a joint Hardy Weinberg equilibrium uh, just check. Now this uh, approach is, is problematic because again, what we are after in, with the FST analysis is the differences between the two populations, meaning for the most interesting SNPs or most interesting regions, the allele frequencies are very different, meaning that likely these allele frequencies do not follow the expected Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium rules, meaning that Blink would most likely remove them as problematic because, well, it will think that it, they do not follow Hardy-Weinberg, so basically they must be faulty in some way, but they are not faulty, but they are exactly showing the differences between the two breeds. So if we follow this uh, kind of uh, simplistic approach and we extract the two breeds, you see there is this uh, 454 animals. Uh, so together the Gumus and the Angora goats. So we do a quality control. And actually here, what you see is we remove just 488 variants for Hardy Weinberg test, which is almost nothing. So this, it also, it doesn't uh, trigger any warnings here that you would remove like half of the data set or anything, but just watch what happens with the results. So bam, you see what is happened, what happened here. So basically we removed almost 500 SNPs, but these 500 SNPs happened to be the most important ones. So basically we lost almost everything from the uh, top SNPs and almost everything that would be of, uh, of interest. So you see, this was the original image and all these kind of showing the differences between the two populations just gone. So again, here is the uh, final comparison with, between the correct approach and when we consider MAF. So you see that this is signal is missing along with uh, some other SNPs and other signals. And if we consider the Hardy Weinberg jointly, then we miss a whole lot of signals from all around the genome. Okay, so I, I think I will cut it here. Thank you for sticking around and uh, checking out these uh, rather interesting outcomes for the, for the FST analysis. Sure, the bottom line is that uh, we all need to take care when we are doing the quality control and all the manipulations with the data so we don't lose the results we are looking for. This is also the end of this video. I thank you for your time today. And uh, well, if you have any questions or comments, I would uh, definitely would love to see them in the comment section of the YouTube video. If you are not subscribed and you are interested in the content of this channel, then I just encourage you to push the subscribe button. If you like the video, of course, there is a like button. If you don't like, well, also you can express such uh, feelings with the dislike button. So there is a bunch of buttons all around here. Anyway, so I will not uh, pull this any longer. So thank you for your time today. And uh, well, just have a nice uh, rest of the day.